I've never done an Ironman triathlon, but I have labored and birthed a few babies, and that's kind of the same thing. Let's take a look at the three distinct events that make up labor. Welcome, I'm Ellen Contard. And I'm Melissa Evans. We've been supporting growing families for a long time. We've come to realize that quality childbirth classes are really hard for growing families today, both in terms of calendar and budget. So we've decided to do something revolutionary. We are offering our full comprehensive childbirth class series right here. Please realize that we are not medical providers nor attorneys. We do not practice medicine nor the law. So use common sense and talk things over with a professional that you trust. But for now, let's take a closer look at labor. What is this thing? What's going on? How long is it going to last? Is it what Hollywood's been showing us this entire time? And just so you know, for this class, we're going to take a very broad view. And in future classes, we'll go into more detail on each of these uh, subjects. In our video on how partners can help, we compared labor to a marathon. And truly, you do burn as many calories birthing a baby as you do running a marathon. However, with its three distinct events, labor really resembles a triathlon much more. Labor is divided into three distinct stages. The first is the opening of the cervix, the cervix being the bottom part of the uterus that allows baby out, the doorway one might say. The second part is actually pushing baby out, and the third part is the birth of the placenta, or afterbirth. First stage is where mom generally spends most of her time. So let's take a closer look at it. In first stage labor, the cervix dilates or opens from approximately zero to approximately 10 centimeters in order to let the baby out to be born. Ideally, mom learns some tools to relax and get out of her own body's way while it does the work. The first stage of labor is divided into three phases, early labor, active labor, and transition. You can remember this with the acronym EAT, which incidentally we want you to do during labor, but that's a whole other video. In early labor, you'll start having contractions. They will typically get a mother from zero to about three centimeters dilation. These contractions tend to be pretty far apart, um, maybe 10 minutes, possibly even 20 minutes apart. They don't usually last very long, maybe even as short as 30 seconds, and they tend not to be very intense. Mom can usually walk and talk through them and sleep. Oh boy, howdy, do we like sleep. If these contractions do not command your attention, don't give it to them. I promise you, you will not sleep through the birth of your baby. Rest. Especially because this part of labor could last anywhere from a few hours to even several days. As you move more into active labor, contractions become more intense and really start to require your attention. They're usually approximately three to five minutes apart and around 60 seconds long as your cervix dilates from about four to about seven centimeters. This is where moms really start to require much more support. The good news is that as labor intensifies, each phase tends to grow shorter. Active labor can last an average of about 12 hours. Transition is the end of first stage labor and it gets a mom from about seven centimeters all the way up to that completed 10. These contractions tend to be very close together, maybe only two to three minutes apart. They tend to be at least 60 seconds, potentially up to 90, and they tend to be very powerful. The good news is this tends to be the shortest part of labor anywhere between five to maybe two hours. Some of the physical signs can be a little bit intense as well. Um, many moms will experience hot flashes and cold sweats, potentially nausea, some shaking. This is when partners really are gonna to have to step up their game. Once we're through transition, we move on to second stage labor, also known as pushing the baby out. This stage tends to last between one to three hours for a first birth. For second and subsequent births, all bets are kind of off on that. Contractions will usually space out a little bit as mom moves from getting out of her own way to let her body work and into actively pushing to birth this baby. So third stage labor, the birth of the placenta is pure anticlimax because who cares about squishy placenta when you've got your baby? So the placenta typically comes between five and 45 minutes after the life it's supported. It doesn't have any bones. It might require a 
push or sometimes even just a simple cough to come out. When we talked about first stage labor, we gave you all kinds of numbers in terms of time and contractions and dilations. And truth be told, those numbers are really just averages. And in labor, there is such a wide range of normal. So it's important to remember that labor is so much more than cervical dilation. Truly, that is only one data point. Have you ever been in charge of the family Thanksgiving dinner with all of the fixings? It's really hard to get each and every single one of those dishes all on the table at the same time piping hot. You know, the turkey's already done, but the mashed potatoes need another half hour and we didn't even start the cranberry sauce. Well, this is kind of like labor, quite frankly. There's a lot of different things going on. And sometimes something has to go on the back burner while another part takes center stage. So the baby needs to move around. The head needs to mold so that baby can fit through the pelvis. There need to be some special movements in order to come out. And the contractions themselves are actually helping to prepare baby for the outside world. Meanwhile, in mom, her body might need a little bit more time for more relaxant to soften the ligaments to give baby enough space to come through. Her body might need a little bit more time to make some colostrum. Um, maybe she needs a little bit more of those beautiful hormones that help with bonding and breastfeeding afterwards. There's a lot of moving pieces here other than just the cervix. So because there are all these things going on, Sometimes mom's body engages in a little bit of rest and realignment in order to make birth happen. But what does that look like from the outside? Well, if the only data point that we're fixed on is cervical dilation, it looks like mom's labor is stalled or she's stuck at X centimeters. Remember that if mom is at a particular dilation for longer than she expects, it's really just so that we can catch the cranberry sauce up to the mashed potatoes. And well, we both love the numbers because, well, we're both engineers. In all honesty, they aren't the best tool to determine where mom is in labor. What's the best tool? Mom herself. What are her emotions? What is her body doing? Let's pay attention to that as well. In early labor, mom may be happy and excited. The day is finally here. Now, at this point, it is still important to face labor calmly because adrenaline can slow things down. We want mom to be eating and drinking and resting just like normal because this can last a while. Also, very, very important, please do not post the fact that you are in early labor on social media. Don't call your parents. Don't do anything that might get you watched like a pot waiting to burn boil. Some moms will even throw out a Facebook post as a decoy. So as labor progresses and mom enters the more active phase, this is where things turn much more internal. Partners, this is where your help is going to become much more important. She may be more sensitive to light and sounds and scents, so monitoring the environment and keeping everything peaceful is a really important job. Partners, just know that this is when she becomes much more serious and jokes are no longer funny you've been warned. Transition seems to be the only part of labor that Hollywood ever shows. This is because Hollywood thrives on drama and transition can be kind of an exciting and confusing time. Sometimes mom gets really discouraged. I can't do this anymore is kind of a common theme heard during transition. So it's important to really step up that support and remember the big picture. Moms can also become very confused and uncertain and comfort measures that were working one moment may not be working in the next moment. Since the physical sensations are also the strongest in this phase of labor, that only adds to the emotional intensity of this time. Just remember, it is the shortest and this too shall pass. And in a way, it's kind of a good sign. It's almost time to push. Most moms will get a little adrenaline rush when it's time to enter second stage. This is great because it clears off that brain frog and gives her the energy she needs to push her baby out. Now, most first time moms and sometimes even subsequent moms will kind of notice there's a miniature version of those emotional signposts. First, yay, I get to push. Oh my gosh, this is really hard. Oh, it's never gonna work. Oh look, there's the baby. It's important to remember that labor is not always linear. 
The numbers that we've given you in this video are really just some basic averages, and your baby doesn't read textbooks or graphs. Labor is a really organic process. Some moms, even first-time moms, have little to no first-stage labor. Other moms might have a bit of a long rest and realignment in mid to late labor. That's why those emotional signposts and those behavioral signposts are so valuable. If those are ahead of that dilation number, heads up, your baby might come sooner than you expect. So what do you think? Did any of this information surprise you? Are you gonna change any of your plans for how to handle your labor? Please let us know in the comments. We really love to read your stories. Please like this video and share it with all your pregnant friends. And do remember to subscribe. We'll be posting new classes every Tuesday and Friday, and we don't want you to miss out. Until next time. Know your options. Own your birth.